السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So again, I have almost almost half an hour, so I'll try to squeeze things, inshallah, in this short period of time. And uh, here we're talking about two conversations that took place. And the first one is between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels. And we all know that this conversation is about the creation of Adam alayhi salam. And the second one uh, is the conversation that took place between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Shaytan, Iblis, himself after the command, the divine command to prostrate to the angels, to prostrate themselves before Adam. So we'll try to draw as many lessons as possible here. So we'll, we'll depend heavily. I was going to go uh, actually into Surah Al-Baqarah, the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah and the verses in Surah Al-Hijr, but I might be only able to, able to do the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. So we start with the verses. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال أنبئوني فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين قالوا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقل لكم قال ألم أقل لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس أبا واستكبر وكان من الكافرين وقلنا يا آدم اسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقربا هذه الشجرة فتكونا من الظالمين فأزلهما الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كان فيه وقلنا اهبطوا بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين فتلقى آدم من ربه كلمات فتاب عليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم Okay, I cut them short, inshallah, so we can make use of the time. And uh, I'm going to read the translation from the clear Quran. When your Lord said to the angels, I am placing a successor on earth, they said, will you place in it someone who will cause corruption in it and shed blood? While we declare your praises and sanctify you, he said, I know what you do not know. And he taught Adam the names of all of them. Then he presented them to the angels and said, tell me the names of these, if you are sincere. They said, glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. It is you who are the knowledgeable, the wise. He said, O Adam, tell them their names. And when he told them their names, he said, Did I not tell you 
that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth, and that I know what you reveal and what you conceal. And we said to the angels, bow down to Adam. They bowed down except for Satan. He refused, was arrogant, and was one of the disbelievers. We said, O Adam, inhabit the garden, you and your spouse, and eat from it freely as you please, but do not approach this tree, lest you become wrongdoers. But Satan caused them to slip from it and caused them to depart the state they were in. We said, go down, some of you enemies of one another, and you will have residence on, on, the, on earth and enjoyment for a while. Then Adam received words from his Lord, so he relented towards him. He is relenting, he is the relenting, the merciful. So let's begin with the first conversation. The second conversation, by the way, takes place after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels to prostrate themselves before Adam and Satan refuses. So then there's a conversation that takes place. So we will not read it, but we will draw lessons from it, inshallah, to make use of the little time that we have. So first, let's start to highlight the importance of the first conversation. The first conversation shows the beginning of humanity, of the existence of humans. Now, this is our history. So the Quran, again, is not a book that relates stories for fun. These stories serve us in our faith. They are the cornerstones of our faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering the question that all of us ask ourselves at some stage or at many stages in our life. Where did we come from? Why are we here for? What are we doing? What is the purpose behind all of this great creation? We're trying to figure out the meaning of everything. We are designed in this way. We're seeking purpose. We're seeking meaning because the meaning of everything lies in its purpose. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, having sent the Quran as guidance for mankind, you know, it's obvious that Allah is going actually to tell us how all of this came together. Now, a good way to relate this to your personal life is, you know, all of the ups and downs that you experience in your life, all of the conditions, all of the states, inner states that you go through, all of that, everything that you experienced in your life, this is how it all began. It began with divine intention. It began, it began with divine will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initiated these conversations with the angels. Some people might think that Allah initiated the conversation with the angels by, for the sake of consultation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need consultation. We need consultation because we don't know everything. We have a lot of blind spots. We have a lot of points, you know, a lot of things that we are ignorant about. So we complement that, we complete that, we make up for, for what is missing by means of drawing on other people's expertise, knowledge, advice, and so on and so forth. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he is al-alim, he is al-hakim, he knows everything. And he is wise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need conversations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need consultation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has different purposes behind this beautiful conversation. First, he wants to demonstrate to us the importance of the existence of humans that draws its significance from the purpose for which we were created. And also to notify the angels of the great creation that is about to come into existence. That's a form of honoring humans. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us. And you know when you honor something, you know when you have a huge event, what do people do? They build some kind of hype, right, for it. Although hype today, a lot of the hype that people create today is very cheap. But, you know, you sort of get people ready for it. You get people primed for it. So when the event comes, it's like, Again, before the launch, you have everyone, everyone's, every, everyone's eyes glued to the center of, of the action. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to notify 
the creation, including the angels, about this great creation, very special creation that he is going to bring into existence. And that's honoring us humans. So Allah said, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً إِذْ You know, in the Arabic language, for those who, again, know the Arabic language, إِذْ is ظرف زمان. It is a preposition of time. It has to do with time. You can translate it as when or at the time Allah spoke or the incident where Allah said to the angels, I'm going to place on earth a Khalifa. And Khalifa is a very rich word in the Arabic language. It could mean a successor, yes. And it could mean as, and these are meanings that the scholars of Tafsir have provided. And all of them describe humans and the human condition. So Khalifa could actually be a trusted, an entrusted individual. Uh, a steward, someone that you appoint to fulfill a job. And definitely this is the case of humans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, entrusted us with a great amana, great trust, a great mission. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love him, to turn that into a lifestyle. That's number one. Successor is also describes the nature of human, the human race. Generation successes the previous one and so on and so forth. So this is the story of humans, right? قَرْنٌ بَعْدَ قَرْنٌ Generation after a generation. A khalifa as well is someone who's given choice because you can't entrust someone with a mission without giving them the ability to make decisions. Otherwise, they're not khalifa. Khalifa is someone that you give them some space for choice. They can make decisions. They can act on their own. Because if you don't give them that, they're not a khalifa, they are a worker. The angels are already commissioned with something. So they are not a khalifa. You know, they never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they only do what they are commanded. So the angels don't choose. They don't make choices. This is why they are not khalifa. So Allah told them, I'm going to place on earth a khalifa. قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ Are you going to place on earth those or this creation that will bring corruption and shed blood on earth? Two things. Two things. Spread corruption and shed blood. Shedding blood is violence. Aggression. This is violence. And... Corruption, what are we talking about? We're talking about moral corruption and we're talking about corruption of life, of the balance in life. Now, I have a question for you. How did the angels, Allah just told them, I'm going to place on earth a Khalifa. So they understand there's a new creation and it's going to be on earth. How did the angels conclude that and they voiced that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah wanted them to do that. That this creation is going to create corruption and shed blood. How did they know that? Hmm? Before creation, so there was jinn before and they created corruption and bloodshed. A lot of the books of tafsir say this. Yeah, we don't have uh, clear evidence that this is the reason. We know that jinn lived on earth way before humans yeah but do we know that the angels arrive at that conclusion because of the story of the jinn we're not sure but it's a possibility any other reason how did the angels figure out Well, we don't have this in the verse that Allah said this khalifa, uh, this. But you know what? The word khalifa suggests that, indicates this. But yeah, if someone has free will, but how did they know these two consequences? Blood, corruption, violence, and moral corruption. How did they know that? How did they anticipate or expect that to happen? Because this is the nature of the earth. When Allah said, I'm going to place in earth, a khalifa, that means a creation. And the angels knew that Allah will place a creation from the earth. 
made from the earth. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Inna Allah khalaqa Adam min qabdatin qabadaha min jami'il ard. Allah created Adam from what? From a handful of mud that he collected from every part of the earth. فَكَذَا جَاءَ أَبْنَاؤُهُ فِيهِمُ السَّهْلُ وَالصَّعْبُ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام This is why humans, there is, there as the variety of mud and dirt on earth, there is a variety of human demeanor and temperaments, different, you know, traits. People are different. People are not the same. وَجَاءَ مِنْهُمُ الْأَسْوَدُ وَالْأَحْمَرُ وَالْأَبْيَضُ And among them were different colors because of the different types of dirt. So, if a creation is made from that dirt, from the earth, it's going to hold two of the traits of the earth. The capacity for violence, which is in the Islamic tradition. And by the way, this is a universal thing. You will find it in Eastern traditions. You will find it in the Greek traditions. And it is mostly referred to in the philosophical world to Plato. And uh, this is that humans have a basic nature that is made of Aggression and anger, al al power. And the second one is desire and lust, al shahawiyya And al al creates violence and bloodshed. al shahawiyya creates what? Moral decay and corruption. So that's why the angels thought, if you're going to give a creature these two traits, since they are from earth, you'll give them choice, they will have free will, then if they act on this free will, they're obviously going to do what? They're going to spread, they're going to bring corruption and shed blood. So that's how the angels expected that. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how did he respond? He didn't say no, they're not going to shed blood. Allah said, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you don't know. What does that mean? Allah is basically acknowledging the point that they raised. Yes. But Allah said there is more to this story. I know what you don't know. There is more that you don't know. There is an element that's going to change everything. So it would be wiser to bring about this creation into existence rather than not to bring them into existence despite what? The corruption and the bloodshed. Look at all of the damage, all of the pain, all of the suffering that comes with bloodshed and violence throughout human history. If you look at human history, it's mostly bloody. It's all bloodshed. It's all unjust war, destruction, most of it. Struggle for power at the individual level and at the level of nations and civilizations. And then the corruption of desire. And we see when humans violate the justice of Allah, the mizan that he put in the creation, when they violate moral principles, because there's a moral structure for reality, once you violate it, you're messing with a very powerful force. So when you do that, you know, you bring about destruction, you invite disease, you invite, you invite violence as well. You bring about a lot of damage to the human race. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that any nation where, you know, inappropriate, indecent, evil actions spread among them, what's going to happen? they will be tried or they will be tested with new diseases, plagues and illnesses that were not, they were never in existence before. So Allah said to the angels, I know what you don't know, there's more to this story. Then Allah taught Adam all of the names. And this is where the scholars of tafsir have really diverged in so many explanations. What do these mean? Uh, some of the companions said, Adam that Allah taught Adam the names of everything. This is a tree, this is a cow, this is a rock, and so on and so forth. But you know, there is something that we know from the tafsir of the companions, generally speaking, you will find the companions when they, okay, the companions were not obsessed with academic definitions as we are today. So you will find, for example, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when he talked about the verse, about women and nasi may yashtari lahwa hadith and some people you know buy this idle talk this waste kind, wasteful kind of talk and speech abdullah ibn mas'ud said wallahi ladhi la ilaha illa huwa innahu alghina this is singing this is singing was he defining was lahu lahu al hadith was 
No, he was giving a, pr a prime example of what that, what that is. This is why a lot of the, you know, the, the def what seems to be definitions from the companions were actually examples. So this is an example of what Allah taught Adam. Some of the Mufassirin that tried to bring this together and they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave humans al-quwa al-aqliya aw al-ilmiya the capacity for reason and wisdom. Because aql is not logic and is not intellect. Aql is more than that. Aql is wisdom and good judgment. That's what aql is. Aql ma aqalaka amma ya'ib. Aql is what holds you back from anything that is shameful. From anything that is evil that's what aql is so this is why there's a lot of confusion you know people say oh is there al -aql wa -naql? is there a conflict between al -aql and revelation they translate aql as what reason or intellect that's not what the question is about that's not what aql is aql is grounded in fitra so when someone is very logical but they but they arrive at immoral conclusions they don't have aql they might have intelligence, which is the ka, but they don't have aql. Okay, so some of the mufassirin drew this conclusion that Allah gave Adam the capacity to transcend these basic forces, these blind forces of aggression, violence, bloodshed, and lust and desire and moral decay. Adam and the sons of Adam can transcend that. Allah gave them the tool by means of wisdom which is based more in the spiritual dimension of humans. And it seems as well, and this, is, this was drawn by some of the contemporary scholars of tafsir, is that it's not that necessarily that Allah taught Adam each thing with its own name, with its, with its label, but Allah gave him the capacity to develop knowledge, to develop knowledge, to build knowledge, to perpetuate knowledge, to create knowledge. Because this is how Allah teaches humans. Because everything we know, all the inventions, all of human knowledge that we have is inspired by Allah. But how do we experience that? It wasn't like laying on some kind of mountain or in a cave and we just figured, we found it. We stumbled on it. No. How does Allah give it to us? Through the process of thinking, intellectualizing, research, and so on and so forth. So Allah creates into this world, oftentimes, through tools, and some of these tools are the faculties that he gave us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave humans this device, the ability to reduce things, to symbolize, reduce things into symbols, create an abstract image, representation of reality, and process that. And that's a very powerful thing. And the verse can really carry this meaning easily. So Allah told Adam all of the names, then Allah made a show in front of, or a display, before the angels, he said, tell me what the names of these things. The angels can only learn what Allah teaches them firsthand. They don't learn on their own. This is why it's an indication that Allah gave Adam a device to be able to learn. To be able to learn and process. So the angels only know what Allah teaches them firsthand. That's it. They don't drive conclusions except when Allah instructs them to. Just like with the question that he, that he asked them at the beginning of the, or the suggestion that he gave them at the beginning of the conversation. So then the angels haven't seen these things. They haven't been taught their names. They said, we don't know this. We only know what you taught us. Allah said, didn't I tell you that I know what you don't know? Then he said, oh, Adam, tell them the names of these things. So Adam was able to name these things. And again, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the specific names, but most likely Allah taught him how to name things. This is why we discover new things and we are able to give them names. We're able to understand them, codify them, and then process them, make a research, study them, draw conclusions, make predictions, predictions, and make discoveries, and so on and so forth. This is why the human life is very rich compared to the animals, because the animals were given the two base forces, the one for power and aggression, which is their defense as well, and also desire and lust, and that is for mating and perpetuation. But they don't have, they were not given this gift that was special to Adam alayhi salam. And here is a beautiful catch. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels raised the point that was, if you place on earth this kind of creation, won't there be bloodshed and corruption? This point is still standing. 
Allah has not addressed it directly in speech. Allah said, I know what you don't know. So this point still needs an answer. Still needs an answer. Allah did not provide the answer in words. Allah provided the answer in what? In demonstration. In a demonstration. When he brought these things before Adam, and he said, name them. And Adam was able to name them. How does this answer? Uh, by the way, I'm not going to get into the second conversation because I almost run out of time. But if I can get to this point, that would be a great thing, inshallah, today. So how does this demonstration answer? I don't want to say the objection. Some people raise it, say, oh, this is an objection raised by the angels. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them instructed them that he wants to have this conversation and Allah wanted them to voice you know what goes through their mind as they hear about this divine plan so they raised these two points a creature on earth from earth that has choice that can actually act out their desires then these desires are blind just like the animals the animals again what do they they kill to eat and survive and they mate. That's what they do. So how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer this point for the angels? This is a quiz. And there is no, no present for the answer. Can someone figure out? Well, how? So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes after this. That Allah, Allah said, O oh Adam, tell them their names. Adam. Uh, when Adam named them, informed the angels of the names, Allah said, Didn't I tell you that I know what's hidden in the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal, and I know what you conceal? So I know more than you know. There is more to this story than what you can perceive. And this is a message to humans as well, by the way. We humans try to make final conclusions. When we only see a small, tiny segment in the spectrum of reality. That's the arrogance of humans. We try to arrive at conclusions. We try to challenge divine guidance and wisdom. When what we know is very little. And we think so well of ourselves. That's the problem with humans. That's the arrogance. And this is where kufr comes from. This is where denial and ungratefulness come from. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the story. Then he moves on to say, and we said to the angels, prostrate yourself before Adam. So it seems to be like the conversation has not ended because there is a question or there's a point that the angels raised. Where is the answer to it? The answer is in what? Is in the demonstration. That according to what you know, according to what you know, if that's, if every, if what you know is going to be the only thing in existence, you have a valid point. Yes, there would be bloodshed, there would be corruption and moral decay. But you know what? There is a new element that is brought into this equation that's going to change everything. And it's going to demonstrate the creativity, divine creativity and wisdom and ability in ways that were never there before. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah says Allah creates for a wise purpose. Allah doesn't create randomly for a wise purpose. And the ultimate purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, cre for creating whatever he creates is that his names and attributes are very powerful and potent. And they are perfect. So they express themselves. Allah is the creator, so he creates. If a creator doesn't create, then the attribute of creation or creativity has not been expressed. Allah is merciful. So if there is nothing to receive the mercy and be the recipient of that mercy, then this divine attribute has not been expressed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his creation, more of his beauty, his personal beauty, and the beauty of his names and attributes becomes manifested, comes expressed fully in the creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the creation of Adam, there is a new aspect of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will become manifested, that will become expressed, that was never expressed before in what we were taught.
And this shows mainly with the worship. We demonstrate that, we humans, with the worship of Allah, which is ultimately the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we live in a state of love and we act this love out into a lifestyle. So what is that thing? This is again, it's not only the intellect, it's the intellect, it's the fitrah that comes from the spiritual dimension, which is morally good, naturally good, which is balanced. Okay, which is the element of morality, goodness, justice, fairness, truth. It's natural. It's built in us. And the ability to bring that into a world of creation and give value to everything in life and then process it based on this. This is what al-aql really is. And this is what Allah gave Adam alayhi salam. So Adam alayhi salam and all of his children are able to reason with life and all of the elements that are in existence based on moral and wise terms. And where do we find these moral and wise terms? They are given to us in the form of fitrah, built in, but they need to be unlocked in that sense. They're more like a seed. And they are given to us through revelation. So revelation and fitrah really resonate. They're a reflection of each other. This is why Shaykh al-Islam al Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, qawamuddin, the establishment of Islam, meaning the reality of Islam itself. إِنَّمَا هُوَ بِالْفِطْرَةِ الْمُكَمَّلَةِ بِالشَّرِيعَةِ الْمُنَزَّلَةِ is the fitrah that is completed, that is optimized with the revealed text. That's what Islam is. That's what Islam is. And this is the only thing that helps humans transcend these base, blind, destructive forces that when they are utilized well, they actually become for forces for development and civilization. But when they are, when they play out beyond the control and the guidance of the fitrah, of wisdom, of good intellect, and moral principles, they become destructive forces. This is why humans, without the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will bring about destruction upon themselves. They might show some promise in terms of invention, civilization, knowledge, etc. But soon, they will fall into moral decay. And when they fall into moral decay, what do they do? They destroy their societies. They destroy themselves. They turn the whole universe against them. It's the creation of Allah starts to curse them. Then they will be blinded to the point that they will bring upon themselves their own destruction. Even with their own hands. And we see that in a lot of the new lifestyles that are emerging. And a lot of destruction, by the way, is happening already. But you know what? It's hidden from us. Through the powerful machine of media. And that manages our focus and attention. And puts it where some people want it to be. But there is a lot that is happening in the world that we don't hear about. There's a lot of crimes that are taking place. But, you know, other things are highlighted to give us a fake perception or impression about reality. So this was the first conversation and this is our history. This is how Adam came about. You know, when humans don't believe in this or when humans turn away from that, they start trying to figure out, you know, theories, which are what? Superstitions, really. They're just sophisticated superstitions uh, to, to be, be an alternative because humans cannot live without knowing where they came from. We need to know a story. We can't live without knowing our story. We need to know where we began from, where we came from, how we began. So this is why humans come up with what? Big Bang Theory. And other theories of how the existence came, uh, came into being. Or, or evolution, right? And humans are a continuation of that. And so on and so forth. And people will tell you this is science. This is a aqidah that is based on no solid foundations. It's aqidah. It is aqidah. Okay, so when we read the Quran, you see the Quran relates to our lives. It really gives us so much about our identity. Because without history, we don't have an identity. We don't know ourselves. We will struggle. We will be lost. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us where we came from, how we, how we came about to be, and what was the story, and how was the launch of human existence.
It was very remarkable and very beautiful. And then the other conversation, hopefully, maybe if we, uh, in a future occasion, inshallah, maybe we will uh, come to it. Ta'ala. Again, Jazakumullah khair for coming out, joining us today. And I hope that you benefit from uh, these sessions and that you are able to reflect on them. Jazakumullah khair. And uh, very happy and pleased to have Sheikh Naveed Aziz from Calgary among us. So he's going to speak next. And I urge all of you to benefit from his talk.